aren't here for the NetMod meeting, then you probably have the wrong room. Uh, as first day. Okay, great. And as Lou just mentioned, uh, we do have Etherpad, and uh, there's the link on this on the slide, or maybe not that slide. Okay, it's off the tool page. It'll be on the next slide. Um, so here's the note well. Uh, this, you know, anything you say or do, uh, you know, contribute in the room, it's considered an IETF contrib contribution. Uh, please be aware of that. Um, as, as mentioned, there's uh, audio, meet echo, streaming. It is recorded. It'll be posted to YouTube later on. So uh, make sure you use the microphones when you're speaking and be sure to state your name. <clears throat> the blue sheets are being passed around the room, so um, please fill in the blue sheet and hand them to other people as they're walking in. Uh, we do need note takers. Uh, Lou and I will do some note taking and our secretary, Michael, will do some note taking. Yes? Okay. Uh, if any, anyone else wants to do some note taking, it would be highly appreciated. That includes remote proponent attendees should feel free to join in the etherpad. Uh, I'll send it in the link in Jabber in a second and then uh, feel free to contribute. Okay. Um, so we have two sessions today, back to back. There's a break in between them. Uh, same room, fortunately. We were able to rearrange or reschedule the, the room assignment to enable that. Uh, the agenda for the first session is uh, as follows. Essentially, uh, we'll go over schema mount and then the ACL drafts and then kick off a discussion on um, revisions or how we handle um, uh, Yang model revisions. In session two, we'll continue going over some uh, post last call, uh, specifically the revised data store drafts, and then we'll get into uh, tree diagrams, uh, Yang catalog, module tags draft, and then some other uh, not yet working group charter drafts, uh, Yang data extensions, and um, modeling finance state machines, and the ARP Yang model. Okay, so updates since last meeting. Um, we do have a new RFC, 8199, Yang module classification. So congratulations and thank you for that. Um, back from ISG uh, is the 6087biz. Uh, currently uh, pending an update, uh, Shepard write-up. Um, we do have a couple new working group documents, 7223biz and 7277biz, and uh, post last call docs, revised data store, which uh, will be discussed today, and the syslog model, which we're waiting for the author to provide an update on. Uh, continuing with uh, revised working group documents, um, the uh, the ones in green we're going over today. The ones that are not in green, we're not uh, reviewing today. Do you want to say anything more about the ones that are not reviewing today? I, I, the only thing I guess uh, to say about the uh, ones we're not reviewing is the entity uh, model. Sorry, <laughs> the entity model was just updated, and the author said it's ready for last call. And 6087 BIS, we've received a couple of comments, and um, the implications of one of those comments is going to be discussed under the tree diagrams. So that's uh, uh, gating the, the republication of that. Correct. Uh, okay, so we do have some liaisons uh, to our working group. Um, there's a... Uh, Oh, right. Okay. So there's one from the IEEE, uh, which we received uh, informally. So it has not yet been formally submitted. So we don't have yet the liaison number for it. Um, but essentially, they're asking for an update on when we'll be able to complete our NMDA related activities. Uh, I did send an email to the working group uh, asking for us to just proactively try to conclude on, on providing them a response even before receiving the official liaison. Uh, we have not actually had any discussion on that yet, but hopefully, um, uh, I, if nothing else, I'll, I'll make a proposal and send, send it to the list and hopefully we can provide them a response. Uh, also, uh, it's we neglected to put a liaison on the screen from the BBF, uh, liaison 1544, 
and that's the thing. Yeah. Uh, this liaison is, I think, the same thing. Is Tim in the room? Yeah. Did you, did you want to say anything about this, Tim? Sure. Uh, well, yeah, sure, if you. And I'll add the liaison to Etherpad as we're, he's coming up. Tim Carey, Nokia. Uh, yeah, so it was just, it, it's pretty probably pretty similar to the IEEE, you know, with the fact that NMDA is now out there. Uh, standards organizations are, are trying to figure out what to do, right? Because they base their, uh, Based their models like on 7223 and you know the the hardware model and they were all you know state uh, based and they split it and they're now now you're bringing them back together again and there's some guidance in here about uh, whether we're going to create uh, state models when we do the NMDA models we'll keep the state models separate and we'll you know we'll, we'll prefix the module names and so they kind of need guidance right because they're trying to figure out what to do with their modules because they've created state modules as well, right? So do they just say, hey, hang on, guys, we're going to go move everything over to NMDA. Uh, are we going to uh, ignore you guys <laughs> and base everything off the state models that were previously there? Or, or are we going to follow like the patterns that you're using for adoption? And they're just looking for guidance to come back how you want to kind of handle that. So it's the, the likely response, once we put it together, will be that you should follow the refactoring approach that we're taking on our existing RFCs, um, including having the appendix, the a, a stateful version in the appendix. Uh, it, it, do you see that type of response causing um, being well received, being uh, um, causing yeah, any problems? From the BB, I, I think that if that's what the answer is, I think that they're willing to accept that, right? I think uh, they'll be asking, they would want to know in the interim, uh, you know, how long would we be doing like the state model separation that when we produce a model, we'll produce a state model type of thing. Uh, right. And I think they'll also just kind of want to get some assurance that, you know, maybe this thing is is good enough that we can they can proceed and start converging their models. Right. You know, right. That there, yeah, there's no no new big change coming down the pipe. <laughs> uh, the the current recommendation for within the IETF, I would I would be hard pressed to see that it would be different outside the IETF. Um, but one of the nice things about the recommendations with having this these module the models in sorry modules in the appendix is that sort of um, is good risk mitigation because you can go down that path while the other parts being developed without any um, concern about uh, in, in long-term incompatibilities or long-term hiccups. So we can certainly put together a response along yeah. those lines. As always, um, we hope that someone in the working group will draft the response. We go, circulate it in the working group, look for, ensure we have a consensus position and then we can send the formal uh, liaison response. But even though it comes from the chairs, it's really from the working group and we wanna make sure there's um, consensus on that. Okay, all right, thanks. But I think you kind of understand what they're trying to get. Yeah, absolutely, it's completely reasonable. Um, as uh, is on the screen, the, the, the PDF conversion lost the font, so that's supposed to be a red arrow. Uh, it'd be great if we could have someone in the working group prepare a draft response um, can we see if there's any volunteers who are will someone willing to prepare a draft response for the working group to review? One hand. Oh, we got, all right. So, uh, Michael, thank you for volunteering. We'll look for a uh, proposed response and perhaps we can use the same one for both the IEEE and BBF. Benoit Clay, so Tim, the, the problem you mentioned, they're, they're valid for any SDOs, right? So yesterday, or I don't recall, this week, we had like a breakfast meeting with the IEEE management team, and we went through the same thing. The, the point is that we've got multiple sources of information. We've got like the tool that Rob uh, wrote on converting things. We've got the frequent ask question as well that uh, Rob mentioned. Uh, what we showed uh, yesterday in the IEEE is that from the catalog, I could do select all Yang modules were uh, IEEE and see the state. So I, I think that what, what we need to do is be proactive and contact all the different SDOs in the open source project that are dependencies on our Yang module and explain what the guidelines are, uh, the tool that we have, etc. The only thing that will be missing in there at the agreement is when it be complete in the working group. 
Yeah, that that was another one. Was they they're kind of wondering when can, things. Can you are, lean in a little now? We. Can. I'm sorry. They're kind of wondering when that's going to be complete. Was the other piece of it? But Benoit, I will say that that one of the things that I know from the BBF perspective is it's important to them is that you know it's kind of like uh, they want to make sure that the the state models will exist for a period of time because they've got stuff that they just published and you know they got to react right. You know it's it's going to go through the the value that the chain of you know people doing dependencies and stuff like that so well, i mean you're asking about the state modules that we're publishing in the appendixes of various rfcs yeah so if, so yeah. when we do an nmda we said that we would also do you know a right. dash state version of the thing and just as long as we keep doing that for for you know a period of time until you know the the industry can get their stuff then reformed up i think we'll be fine I don't think we've ever put a timeline as to how long we would continue doing that, but I assume we would continue doing that for as long as the market needed it. Right, and I think that's what they're—that's exactly the answer that I think we that they would like for you to provide. Okay, great, thank you. All right, um, from a milestones perspective, we uh, did uh, complete 6087 bids, but as Lou mentioned, we may have to uh, make a modification to uh, for tree diagrams. And uh, model classification also is done. The uh, ACL model and entity uh, in, in purple. These are the ones that are uh, coming, you know, on on track. Um, so ACL model, entity, schema mount, and revised data source are all uh, on track for milestones. The uh, syslog model, unfortunately, is uh, lacking. Uh, it was supposed to be published back in April, and I think we're right now just waiting for a uh, response from the author uh, to the uh, Shepherd write-up. And then lastly, uh, interface extensions and sub-interface VLAN are both, uh, um, they're a little bit behind, but so it's just a warning. I'm not sure if we'll get them out in December, but hopefully we will. That's it. Perhaps uh, Rob Wilton, if you're in the room, do, uh, if you could give an updated uh, estimate date when you think the documents will be ready for last call. So, uh, so Rob Wilton, so the interface extensions one, I think actually it's just I need to add examples into that document. And then that one I think is pretty much probably ready to go to work group last call. So that one's not far away. The problem one actually is that second one, the bottom one on the layer, the sub interface Yang one. Uh, I triply, I changed the structure to simplify it. And I triply had had some concerns with that. So I need to follow up with them to check that they're happy with the, with the current structure in terms of how the VLAN tags are represented. So depending on how quickly that goes is is what's going to control. If they say it's fine, then then it's ready. If they say no, then there'd be more discussion. OK, great. Thank you. And with that, I think we can begin the presentations. First presentation. Can we get some uh, minute takers in Jabber to help? Because out of the discussion right now, there are just four lines. So I'm trying to help there, but we need more people doing the minutes. Otherwise, we're losing the action items. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Radio Hotka, and I'm going to talk about this schema. Yeah. Uh -huh. well, this schema mount draft. And actually, since it is already past working group last call, I'm only going to cover the the new issues that arose during the working group last call. And they are these four. So the first one is about uh, prefix and namespace declaration in the schema mounts specification. We need it because we uh, uh, use XPath expressions in the specification of uh, the so-called parent references, if you remember what it is. And uh, so we can use, of course, namespaces, prefixes in those XPath expressions. So that's why we have this simple list declaring just the prefix and URI. It was done so because it is really very close to the notion of how XML deals with namespaces, that means a prefix and namespace URI. But uh, I think Rob proposed uh, that maybe we should add a module name because this is what, what we have. We, of course, we have a module and the names, names, namespace is uniquely 
assigned to every module. So that's of course possible. On the other hand, to have to have both URI and uh, module names, it seems redundant to me. So it, another option might be just to uh, drop the URI and use uh, module name. Actually, in in the existing revision, there was some mistake that the URI here was optional. It it should be. Uh, mandatory as it is indicated here but anyway the question now is whether um, our proposal we discussed this with Martin and our proposal is to, to leave it as it is because it's not really so important but of course uh, as a second option uh, I would propose maybe to use module name because it's of course easier uh, easier to to read for human readers. So are there any opinions on this? This is really uh, minor. Lou, as uh, both contributor and chair, given that we have um, gone to last call on this, unless there's a specific issue that we're fixing, um, we should make the change. Okay, Dan. You said their proposal is one. Yes. But then you mentioned uh, Option two, that you would. Uh, I mentioned it as my second preference, so I, I would I would suggest to uh, leave it as it is, and as a second preference, we might consider using the name. But if there are no strong opinions, I think that we could probably leave it because it's it's well, minor. Uh, if your main preference is no change, then I wouldn't even go for two because the only place where I would change it would be essentially for the three because it gives me more flexibility for identifying, uh, you know, as, as, as essentially the proper namespace. So do you suggest to use option number three here? Well, I'm, I would because I would say no change, but if, if we would agree all to change, then I would say go with, with option number three. Okay, so. So to be clear, I think we've just heard three comments that say no change yes. is the first preference. Okay, I think we can stick to it. it. It shouldn't be a problem, really. Second issue is about NMDA support. That's a bit tricky. We discussed it with Martin. The problem, of course, is that we can have... Uh, oh, uh, in, in fact, uh, the, we, as you know, we have the two methods of uh, specifying uh, the mounted schema. And for the use schema method, uh, this method should just work because you can imagine it's just some kind of an augment where the target node is specified externally to the module. So assuming that uh, augments work with, with uh, an MDA architecture, which they of course should, then this use schema method should work as well. Whereas uh, in the inline method, uh, there are some problems and some gaps because the mounted schema in this case is specified by some instance data and namely state data. So this data is only present in uh, the operational data store. And since uh, other data stores like intended can differ in their contents, uh, it could also be that this state data with the Yang library is not present. For example, consider uh, a mount point instance in intended that is a part of some pre-provisioned uh, configuration for non-existing hardware at, at the moment, but it can be in intended, but since Mm, the resources don't exist yet. Uh, this entry may not exist in operational, and so we have no place to look for uh, the Yang library that, that's, that's supposed to specify the schema. So in this case, if we put something into intended as a part of, of uh, the mounted schema for this mount point, we cannot determine the schema and uh, so we cannot validate the intended. So the rule that intended has always be valid uh, cannot be enforced here. So 
what it means. Maybe it's, uh, as Martin suggested in our discussion, it's possible that the use cases for the inline method are so that this is not an issue. But in any case, this is how it works. And so if the inline method is used, it has to be ensured that this simply cannot happen because otherwise you might have problems. Yeah. Uh, on on your example, I was really trying to figure out yes. where in the real life scenario I would have you know such a case. It's yes. th th this is a theoretical corner case. Yeah, yeah, it is. As I said, it's possible that it will never happen. But you know, the use schema case is really general, so you can use it as as you can use augments anywhere and don't care about anything. In this case, it it there is just this small catch. I'm not saying it's it's a big problem, but we have to take I, care about this. I really don't see it to be you know to be it as a real life problem. All right. Any more comments to this? If not, then I can continue to an ACM considerations, access control. And the problem here is that, of course, we can have uh, the NACM module in the top level schema, but we can also have it mounted under a mount point. But we dis discussed this with Martin, and again, with the use schema method, we cannot figure out any use case where this could be useful because every client in this case should be able to see the entire tree and so the top level NACM rules uh, should be used to cover the the entire uh, instance tree to specify access rules and so in this use schema method this is not an issue whereas again for the inline method it there are really use cases and i hope Dan will confirm where uh, we can have uh, an, AC, an ACM data both in the parent tree and in, in the mounted tree. So the reasonable rules in this case could be that the top level NACM rules apply to, because in this case, in most cases, we will have these, this split management. It means basically two netcon for con servers, one for, for the host management session as it is called in in the routing working group device draft and so in this case for the host management session uh, the nacm rules in at the top level could cover the entire tree both the parent and uh, mounted data but the ncm rules in the mounted tree should apply only to the uh, sort of embedded session, which is uh, called LNE session in, in the device draft. So, because in, in this case, the client only sees this, this mounted uh, data tree. And so it makes sense, the NACM rules to talk only about uh, this data. So in this case, uh, NACM rules, of course, can only refer to uh, the mounted data tree and never to the parent data tree, even though we might have the option to use this parent references uh, to somehow make parent data accessible to it. But it, this should be uh, this should be banned by the rules. So we have two options here: either specify such rules in this document or address uh, these special rules elsewhere, for example, in the NACM document or in the next revision of this document. Our proposal here is to include some simple rules like this in, in this document. Of course, this may need some discussion in the mailing list. So, uh, with regard to the NACM rules, uh, from the LNE perspective, they are really important because you are separating the, uh, you know, the administrative domains, yes. and you are essentially defining who can read what data. Coming up with the rules in this document will just delay the schema mount, and uh, until we really learn 
what rules would we really need as a minimum, I would, you know, essentially really say put it out in the in the NACM document where those rules will be specified and we can add them for use cases. I wouldn't I wouldn't try to put them into this one. I already know which one I'm looking for, but I, I want to see from some, you know, uh, real life uh, experience, uh, you know, validation or not or not getting validated. Yeah, okay, it, it also ma makes sense because this schema mount mechanism is designed to work without an ACM, so it's just an ex some yeah. kind of extension of Yang. So, um, any more opinions, any more comments? Ken uh, Watson, as a contributor yeah. uh, and co chair of the. No, you just jumped from BNQ. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, but as, as also as co chair of the NetConf working group, um, 6530, uh, sorry. 6536 biz is already in um, ISG. So if we were to try to put it in that document, it would I mean, it'd have to be yet another biz, that document. It'd be much further down the road. Uh, Lou Berger um, with whatever hat. <laughs> um, do you see this as an issue for in the NI case? It's not an issue for any uh, case where this use schema method is used, which I assume is this an That's NI correct. case. So it so, really doesn't so, matter. Um, it's, it's good to establish for that the in the base case, when you use use schema, that's not an issue. Yes. Because that can inform what we can do here with LNE. Because LNE has two cases. One case is identical to uh, the NI case when managed equals true, which yep. means that that case is exactly the same, yeah. so it's covered. In the other case, where managed is false, there is no access from the top level at all. Uh -huh. There's only access from within the context of the and of the LNE, and that will have its own NACM. So it's a non-issue. So I think um, the fact that this is being raised as an issue is actually a little confusion about how LNE works. Yeah, and but I'm happy to work offline as long as okay, as long as you. Uh, think that the NI isn't a problem. I don't think we have a problem here because we just doc document that the two forms um, of the schema mount that way. Okay, so let's discuss it offline, and we will see whether we and we can then confirm. And I may be wrong. I may be wrong. I may be missing something, yeah. which is quite possible. But I think we're, we're basically making the same same, same, same point as those actually. Yeah. Um, in, in fact, if in the LNE case there is no access from the parent level to, to the mounted level, it, it means that we basically do not need any schema mount at, at all, basically, no, right? Because... Uh, right. In that case, you're not, when manage equals false, you're actually not using schema mount. Yeah. So this really doesn't matter for LNI. Not comes or not, because once you mount, well, actually, once you create an LNE, whatever you do inside the LNE, it's it's you know it's that one you know owner for, of the LNE. So not come for LNI. I I don't see any use case. Okay, as I just said, this is only an issue for the case where we have some. We want to have some access from the parent tree to the mounted tree. If there are no such use case, then we have no issue at all. Of course. And uh, the last issue that was uh, raised by Rob, I believe, is about uh, Yang library and schema mount integration. And actually, it, it makes a lot of sense because uh, these two basically define how the overall data model looks like. The Yang library gives you the collection of modules that we have and the schema mount Without schema mount, they have to be used side by side by side. All, all the uh, all the Yang, Yang data models coming from the Yang modules. Whereas with schema mount, we can have some uh, some hierarchical uh, arrangement of of the module trees. And actually, there have been already two concrete proposals. The first one by myself. Uh, several months ago, and then recently, Rob started a new thread, which is, I believe, now in the NetConf mailing list that discusses uh, an alternative proposal. 
Of course, this is a bit difficult because it changes, it might change young labor in, in some way and it would certainly take some time, so I'm not proposing to do it now. Maybe we can just see how things work. But in my opinion, uh, we have to strive for making things simple, really, because for, for a newcomer who wants to start with Yang, it's, in my view, really important that the concepts are relatively simple and it doesn't help if such a newcomer is told that this was there uh, this because of some uh, some compatibility considerations and, and backward compatibility and so on. Because if it is complex and hard to understand, people will not use Yang at all, and that would be our problem. Rob? Uh, before Rob goes, yeah. um, from the Jabber room, uh, Martin makes the comment on the previous slide, and I apologize them for getting to it late, uh, is that this really must be done in this document. And I think I think we've established that we will uh, cover NACM considerations in this document before it goes forward, both because of the BIS issue, which Martin uh, actually, um, somebody raised, hold on a moment, Joe Clark raised, um, and also Martin okay. is raising. So I was just gonna make the point um, that tomorrow I'll cover in the NetConf session these different options effectively in terms of what we're proposing. But I guess the fact- Can you, can you lean in a little? We can't hear you. Sorry, so, oh yes, but okay. Um, so I'll be covering this, um, the different options for Yang Library that we're looking at tomorrow in the NetConf session. That's part of my slide set there. Um, I don't have an opinion as to whether we should wait or not, but it is the case that effectively Yang Library is open at the moment to updates. And we want to get that finished quite quickly as well. So the timelines may, Aligned somewhat, it slows down by a couple of months. I would have thought. And um, actually, I made a high-level proposal. Uh, I think, as a disclaimer, I have to say that this is not necessarily Martin's opinion, but I think it would make a lot of sense, really, to structure uh, the specifications in two doc documents, and document number one would cover some kind of really small meta modeling language meta meaning that the granularity here is at the level of yang modules so it means it would be a combination of yang library describing the collection of yang modules to use and uh, this use schema structure that describe how the modules are combined into the schema hierarchy and second document could be the inline case of schema mount and possibly the name schema mount could be used only for, for this case that could deal with special use cases in order to fit to an MDA as we discussed with an ACM, whatever, but also with questions like configuration and provision of, of mount, mounted data and these questions arise uh, repeatedly on, on, on the mailing list because somehow this uh, inline method really invites the consideration of how instances are mount mounted and so on. So, and as you could see, the inline method has a lot of exceptions. We cannot, quite often we cannot do uh, in the inline method what we can do with the use schema method and vice versa. So in, in my view, it would make a lot of sense to do it this way. And in this first case, this meta modeling language dealing with Yang modules, uh, it would be a simple concept, just how to describe the overall uh, data model consisting of uh, multiple uh, Yang modules. So that's my proposal. Again, as I said, we can discuss it later and try to do something with it later, but I would say this is really important to make things simple and easy to understand. Uh, g given the document is post last call, um, a major reorganization is basically hitting reset. Uh, do you th really think that the problems are substantive enough that we need to do that? Yeah, well, I understand, but I think that it's really important to get, get it right. That should be the primary priority, because if we don't do it right, then we will have problems later. And of course... What, I mean, we, we've talked over this reorganization, and you've raised this repeatedly over, sure, over sure. the document lifetime. 
Um, and each time we come back to keeping it sort of the way it is. Uh, it's quite an, it's an interesting note. We discussed this with Martin and it turned out that Martin is only interested in the inline case, whereas I'm only interested in the, the use schema case. So that might be another reason why we have this these problems. I'm going to uh, um, uh, repeat a comment from Jabber for Martin, and then uh, Dan will respond. So this is Martin's comment, not mine. Um, I don't want to split the document. We've discussed this before. It's just a split of the content. Uh, so Dan, please. Uh, Dan Bogdanovich, document as is, in my opinion, is good enough to move forward and for us then to try to cover, you know, the multiple corner cases that are not, you know, being, um, that I don't see them being like a real life issue. And then to try to reorganize the document to postpone the, you know, publishing or the RFC, I think it's, uh, it's, it's a wrong exercise to do. And I am, as an implementer, you know, and uh, as uh, depending on some of this stuff, I would like to get it done because this is good enough for me to use it. Okay, so we will see how it works. Okay, great, thank you. Lata. If you have comments, please, of course, send them to the list. Um, I think we'll be trying to wrap up all the issues and move towards uh, uh, Shepherd write-up and publication, which is, um, by the way, uh, Kent's call because, uh, as I mentioned before, I'm also a contributor in this effort. We are running over, um, so just for speakers, if we can uh, move a little faster, that'd be great. Uh, good afternoon. So today I'll be presenting the updates uh, Mahesh and uh, I made for um, the um, ACL Yang model. So the last time we presented draft number 11, and uh, we've had three updates since then. I think you have to hold the mic. Oh, sorry. OK. So um, basically, in drafts uh, 12, 13, and 14, we've incorporated a lot of um, new match and action criteria. We've incorporated statistics and also the attachment of the ACL to the interface, a list of ACLs to interfaces. And this data has been gathered by looking at several vendors, um, namely um, the two big vendors that we looked at were Juniper and Cisco and um, Arista. So we took a lot of their matches and actions and put them into the ACL Yang model. Okay, so um, one big enhancement is the support for statistics on a per ACE, per interface basis. Um, this is needed because um, stats can be gathered on a, um, as the packet enters um, the uh, specific port on the line card, we have stats that are collected. So this change now gives us uh, matched packets and matched octets on a per ACE, per interface basis in both directions. Um, the previous draft did not have this support. They had only stats on a per ACE basis, which meant that a vendor would have to aggregate um, stats for that ACL across all interfaces it was applied, which is really not granular enough. Um, the next big change is the application of a... Excuse me? Yes. Question on the previous one. So uh, the stats collection and the ACES are highly dependent on the ASIC implementation. And uh, on some of them, you can do that only on the ingress side. And on some of them, not on many of them, you will have also on the egress. So. In this case, you are then essentially trying to put onto something that will not always work on all the ASICs. Um, so this is an option. Um, so what this is saying is that stats can be gathered either on the, I mean, so, so wherever you have the ACL applied, um, you can either gather stats on an ingress direction or the egress. It doesn't mean you have to gather it on both. 
it's optional where you have your ACL attached. Um, Mahesh Jethanandan. So uh, I think to address uh, Dan's comment, one of the comments uh, that Christian provided is that um, there be a separate egress interface and an ingress interface defined that you can uh, that you attach the interface to. So you're saying that this would be. I have can one you one speak on the microphone, microphone, please? Uh, so you're saying that I would have for the flow one ingress and one egress, and then I'm collecting the stats for that flow uh, through the uh, device? What I'm saying is that the attachment point could be either ingress or egress. Now for stat collection, um, that's a good question. I don't know the answer, whether we can split. And, and the other issues here is that, um, why didn't you just say this is a ACL with a counter in, in, instead of separating it out as a, as a separate ACL? You're just using then a, you know, a match condition, a, a, just a match condition. So in a standard ACL, if you use the match condition, so, sorry, if you use the action counter, then you are counting you know, essentially the packets through that. And this is a pretty standard way of, of the, that is implemented, you know, by just using the counters. Why having a separate, why having a separate stats ACL when, when this is done with the counters? Um, probably we should uh, take this offline with that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So the next one is the... Um, application of the ACL on the interface. So now we can support um, a list of ACLs on um, either either or um, either and ingress and egress directions. So the earlier models, um, the earlier drafts did not have this support. <clears throat> okay, now Excuse there, me. One yes. Other question. You said list of ACLs. That means uh, ACL topologies. Um, a list of ACLs. Um, I mean, ACLs with their that, that you're a serial applying to one interface. Yeah. So this then has to be optional as well because not the ASIC vendors support that. They don't support ACLs on the interface. They don't support more than one ACL per interface. Yes, that is fine. So this this allows any number of ACLs on the interface. But strictly serial, you 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 you, you cannot build different topologies except serial ones. That's that that is a pretty hard limitation on some of them. You can put them serially, but you cannot create you know like forking inside the ACL to bring hierarchical ones. Uh, Rob Wilson, I was just going to suggest that you could put um, uh, max elements on the list. One. Can you speak in the microphone, please? Can you say your name? Uh, so, Rob, what I was just saying, you put max elements. As a vendor could put a constraint on here, a deviation, max elements. Of we can do that. Then, yeah, we can well, do that. Yeah, I wouldn't put it in the model. I'd put it in the um, in a vendor model, vendor augmentation. Yes, yeah, we can add that in. <clears throat> okay. Um, there are also uh, quite a few match and action um, statements that were added in. So one action was logging. Um, then we also added the DSCP and ECN leaves. And um, we also added the um, operations to the source and destination port containers so that you can uh, match on um, greater than, less than, um, not equal to, and of course, the default being equal. Um, some of the other matches are um, adding all the headers for TCP, adding all the TCP flags, um, adding the UDP header, um, ICMP, and also adding the uh, input interface. Um, there, um, after we published draft number 14, um, there was um, 
a lot of feedback given by Christian, which uh, were all mostly very valid comments, which um, are in the process of being incorporated in the next version of the draft. So those include, um, so some of his comments deal with um, the usage of containers versus groupings, um, the way that um, we do um, for the input interface, maybe we want to divide that into um, ingress and egress input interface. And um, he had a few more comments on like statistics and um, um, the groupings of the different types of ACLs. So those are changes that will be incorporated very soon. So, pardon me, John Heasley, uh, NTT. You were, you're, can, can you, you, can you the lean into the mic really Sorry. far? We didn't hear anything. Sorry. Is this better? Yeah. Yes. So, so what was you, your name? Uh, John Heasley and with NTT. <clears throat> you were saying the different types of ACLs. You're referring to Ethernet, V6, V4, right? Yes, so there's V4, V6, um, L2, and there's also this concept of a mixed ACL, so like V4, V6 together. Um, yeah, so because because we saw that some vendors could actually support both in the same ACL. I have one last comment on, on the ACL. Why is uh, this ACL model is getting fairly complicated? And, uh, you know, all the iterations that are trying to be put into a basic model will you know turn into such a mess with deviations from the vendors that it will be like oh you know what just forget it and use whatever else there is from the vendor side so if you really want to cover those why not create a basic base model and then create then created the extended models that can cover you know those variations and then the vendors can say which of those variations they will have but it will be the same base model for everything if you will you will you cannot cover all the very all the variations in ASICs that are out there even by the same vendor they there are significant differences it will make the implementation so complex and it will it will just be a, a, a nightmare quick follow-up point to that as well just jumping in Rick Taylor um, the other end of the spectrum from doing ACLs in ASICs is if you're doing ACLs in a full software stack. So I want to look at any 16 bits anywhere in the packet for ACLs. So how many Yang models do I have? How many extra little leaves have I got to have for offset 23, offset 58? Uh, I, I think you need to break this down into a core model that can be extended over time or this is never going to be finished. This is from Jabber from Jeff Haas. Uh, in order to do a base model and extensions, you must first know what the expanded form would look like. So I think that follows on very nicely with Rick's comment. Uh, Mahesh, um, to address Dan, your comment about uh, the base model, by the time you actually declare the feature, you can make it a fairly base model. Uh, the way that we do that, is you can just declare feature ETH and all you will get is an ETH container and that's all, nothing else in the model. That is fine because right now today's vendors are calling a filter or ACL and they are being differently constructed and you always have you know, to do all that parsing. If you start with the base model and you say this isn't a layer two and an IP and you know just having the very basic one that you can then start from there. but. If you try to cover all the variations, I think you're, you're getting into fairly complicated. But we can should take this off the list in order to be on time. Okay. Yeah, we're going to start with kickoff, AC. You're actually second. Oh. You have a stand here. All right. We've had some discussions on uh, Yang revisions. And we've run into a couple of um, real world use cases that uh, have uh, ended up with um, uh, some good discussions uh, in the context of a BIS that we've planned, 82 to 22 BIS. There's some been discussions in L3 related to an S L3SM documents. And we've also had examples of, of um, 
some solutions coming out in terms of drafts. What we wanted to do is to sort of kick off a discussion here. Uh, here, what was the uh, real world use, uh, what was the real world experience with 8022 through that adoption process, and then go into uh, Benoit's proposed uh, handling of this in the revision document, and then hopefully have some time left in the session uh, to, for some open discussion. But the, the, the most important thing um, for the working group is to rec for us to communicate collectively and have some agreement on what the problem is. And if we have agreement on that there's a problem, then agree that we're gonna go work on the solution. We're not gonna try to find the solution today, what we are going to do is make sure we have some good understanding so that we can get some good discussions on um, current proposed solutions as well as get people thinking about what alternative solutions there should be. So the first thing is, is that um, with the current uh, rules in, in, the, in Yang specification, there's some very limited uh, uh, types of uh, changes that can be made within the same module. And the, in order to affect other types of changes, you have to replace that module. If we replace a module, we run into the next problem, is that we don't have any um, uh, syntax in Yang to support tooling to automatically understand what the relationships are between a module that replaces another module. And there's a, a few other cases that are, are listed here. So, where does our, our current situation start? I don't want to call it a problem, but the current situation starts, is it starts with, number one, what our rules are. And the rules state very clearly that they, uh, any changes in a module, any updates to a module, must be backward compatible. And that goes to both the definition of leaves and structure, as well as the presence of those, uh, of leaves and structures. You can't remove things, you can deprecate, but you can't remove. If we want to make any other changes, the what the document says, what the rules say, is we need a new module name. The other thing is to keep in mind is, is our process inside the IETF, remember our, our, our what we produce here are our documents, and those capture our Yang models. Our documents allow us to have some metadata that says one document updates another, or, and that, or one document replaces another. We know BISs, we do them all the time, right? The problem is, is that doesn't show up in the tooling. Uh, sorry, show up in the model to support tooling. So what some of the implications? Um, we have the real world case of the L3SM where we have basically a, um, a broken module that came out, whether that was the right thing or the wrong thing, doesn't matter, it happened. But we, to re according to a strict interpretation of our current rules, we can't use the same name for the fix. Uh, in the case of 8022, we wanted to remove some nodes, but that's not allowed. So that means we have to change the name, but then we run into the linkage problem, which is the third bullet. Uh, if we wanted to support some more complex changes, like you do in, in uh, source code. For example, you have a branch that becomes a maintenance branch and you wanna make a modification in that maintenance branch. We don't have semantics to do that. Not saying that is what we wanna do, but people have talked about using code, source code models and apply them to Yang uh, modules. And if we do that, this is a very natural thing that happens with source code and we should think about it. Uh, and I think we've covered really the major points. So the goal is we would like to find a solution that allows us to deal with all types of module uh, revisions. There's been some change, some some discussion in email. There's been a proposed document. We're going to hear a little bit in that in a moment. Other solutions, as I mentioned before, are possible. We want to kick, this is a kickoff of a discussion. It's not a time, we're not at the point say, we're saying we're ready to select an answer. We're saying we need to focus, it's time for the working group to focus on this, come up with some good solutions, discuss those here now to start, and then 
sorry, discuss the problem to start in one solution. This is a start and then moving forward, particularly hopefully at the next meeting, we'll have some documents that have solutions and we really wanna try to push um, uh, forward on selecting the right solution quickly. So with that, um, we're ready for AC and then we'll hit, come back to discussion. So as part of the whole uh, NDMA effort, where we decided we were going to uh, respin all the existing modules that followed the split uh, tree with the config and state in separate containers. And uh, so one of those was the IETF routing model and its uh, augmenting IETF uh, IPv4 unicast and IP. IETF, IPv6 unicast modules as well, and one for IPv6 router advertisements. I'm working on this with uh, Lada. He was the original offer of IETF routing way back when we were all younger. And uh, Ying Zen is also helping out on this. I promised uh, Kent I'd go really fast. So after this slide, I, I'm, I'm gonna go straight to the end. So we started out with doing this, we wanted to minimize the disruption and the work and start with a clean slate. So we started out with new uh, naming. We had IETF routing to IETF IVB4 unicast routing hyphen two and so on, just in the same vein as what was done with MIB1 and MIB2 in the, back in the SNMP days. Well, this proved to be, you know, our goal was a clean split. This proved to be, you know, based on input we received on the list, this was much more disruptive and it was inconsistent what was done for RFC 7223 bis and RFC 72, whatever the, whatever the one is for IP, IETF, IP interface routing. So, so, uh, and, and part of the reasons when was gonna has in detail, and he's gonna go through it, the whole story of the IETF routing and why that broke tooling and everything else. That's that's in, I don't know how many of you got a chance to read the new Yang module update, but that's gonna be in this whole thread of discussion on revisions. He's gonna talk about that a little later. Uh, one thing we did differently, because we wanted to limit the implementation cost of this and there weren't a lot of, impl of implementations and deployments of IETF routing, we went straight with the uh, not now redundant with revised data store state trees, we went straight to uh, obsolete. We didn't take the deprecated. What this allows is it's for new implementers of IETF routing and its children, it allows uh, a much uh, simpler implementation than having to implement all these deprecated notes. And like, you can look at the draft for this. Uh, we're, collect we're in the process of connecting, collecting comments. We've gotten some good input, input from uh, Valdemar and uh, also Rob has a pending comment I gotta talk to him about. Uh, one thing that's we're gonna to have to decide is whether or not we need on the imports, whether we not need to specify a revision now that we have multiple versions of these modules. And that and that's all part of this discussion. We also, there's possibly also, now that we've moved along with RFC 6087 biz, there might be some new changes we wanna put in to be compliant with the, that latest version. And that's it. No, it uh, didn't like it for some reason. 
you guys can hear me send the slides through. Now let's just see if this works. I'll just have to page for you. It's not the right one. Oh, it's the wrong one. Sorry. So, Kent, how much time do I have? I want to make sure there's discussion after. Uh, you're only four minutes behind. So, uh, you have 16 minutes. Uh, I'll reduce it. Yeah, and there's 15 minutes after that for discussion. Okay, so I'll make it 10? Yeah. Okay. No, 15. Right, but I can reduce it. I want, I want to have discussions. So, okay, anyway, let me start talking. Thank you. Uh, thanks for the intro. It was well stated. Thanks, uh, AC, for the, the, the explanation. What I want to do here is show you what's happening from a tooling point of view. I won't be repeating what, what, what you said, Lou, and everything, so I will skip a couple of points. Now, from a tooling point of view. Thanks uh, to PowerPoint, deciding that it needs to be something different than it. OK. Just give it a second. Yes. Very good. So, okay, if you go to the next slide, you know that I try to work from two links, right? So if you look at this, you would see that this is the ITF routing in the middle and all the dependent Yang modules, right? So what, do you, what does it mean? It means that if you change this one, there's a lot of impact. Now, if you, if you go to the next slide, as soon as AC published a draft with the uh, IETF routing 2, well, it showed up in the, in the tool, right? Now, what does it mean? It means that someone in this community, and I take the role for that, has to contact every single document author of the depending draft on IETF routing to say, hey, there is a new version with a new name, and you should be thinking about importing the IETF routing 2. Right, that's the manual process. Okay, thank you. So, uh, if you look back at this slide, it means a lot of people. Part of the tooling we've been doing in the Yang catalog, we had to create a script to do that. It's kind of automatic in the ITF, right? We extract from the dependent Yang module draft name, we extract the author. Now, ITF routing, it's I ITF. For the other draft, sorry, for the other Yang modules, this is across as your issues. If we look at something like the IT interface and Yang module, we have like dependencies in IEEE, BBF, OpenConfig, MEF, vendor, etc. So does it mean that now I would have to contact via liaison or process all the different SDOs or even the guys I don't know about to say, well, change your import? because there's a new module name. And, and you see things that are even weird, like some modules import both of them. So from a tooling point of view, from an automation point of view, it's a mess. All right, it's not a new problem, right? The OpenConfig people came like some time ago and expressed the same thing. Now, we could say, well, you know, if you go from uh, ITF routing to ITF routing-2, well, there is a way to do that. It's an RFC header. There is like an obsolete or update there. But, you know, in this world of automation, going via a level of indirection, which is you go from a Yang module to the RFC header tag to see if it updates or obsolete another one, it's a non-starter. All right. Now, the source of the problem. Lou mentioned the updating a module section rules. 
This implies that we, we have to make sure that the Yang modules are perfect, at least the structure, whenever they hit the door in the ITF. It means delay. Now, we had like two examples, and that's not a new problem, but it's the first time we see it with two occurrences in the ITF with the L3 VPN module and with ITF routing module. The L3SM was something was somehow different because it was broken, so not in the implementable. But we have to rethink the way we update our Yang modules. Now, this could be fine, but what is the bigger problem or the end goal? The operators, they want to automate their services. So we have an issue of service composition, right? If we take an orchestrator, we've got a service, it maps to multiple Yang modules, potentially in different network elements. And we keep that mapping. So whenever an operator wants to do a service creation, it has to know which Yang modules work together, right? This is what some people call a release bundle or a package. Now, typically, an operator would look at some metadata. It comes from the same SDO. Or, you know, there is like in the Yang catalog uh, a metadata called tree type. If it's NMDA compatible as a value, well, they should be working together. In the end, he has to do some testing to create the services and to keep the mapping to the different Yang module network elements. The biggest issue is the service maintenance or update. Am I doing this noise? OK, let me move. So the bigger issue is a service maintenance or the update. If you, for example, update a device, OS, right? Let me move again. If you update a device, OS, with new Is this on? OK. If you update for the third time a device OS, then uh, you might have new Yang modules, right? So if, for example, you change from ITF-routing to ITF-routing-2, then it means that you have to change all the Yang paths for your mapping. Every single time, you have to change your service to update the Yang paths. This is the, the big issue. Now. Whenever you upgrade your device, maybe because you want to upgrade your service, so whenever you want to just upgrade for something different, you, uh, you might have some uh, non-backward compatible Yang modules. That's a fact of life, right? Uh, there are different organizations that work with non-backward compatible Yang modules. There are native models in the wild. So that's a fact that we have some backward incompatible Yang modules. So whenever you update that device, what's happening is that you break your services. At least you want to be aware that there is like an issue with semantic versioning, right? That if you would upgrade your device, you would have a new Yang module. It's ideally the same name, but you would know that it's a like not backward compatible. You would compare changes for your service. Is it affected? Yes or no? That's the end goal. Proposed solution is, first of all, we believe that we have to relax the, the rules to update Yang modules, right? Going from the L3PN to L3PN-2 just to fix, okay, a big issue, but one issue, it's an issue, right? Uh, from a tuning point of view. So we want to keep the same Yang module name. Now we want to mention if a Yang module that we produce is backward compatible with the previous version. We propose to have something based on Semver, again proposed by OpenConfig some time ago, right? Uh, reuse with permission, with major, minor, and patch. I mean, we know this in the development world. Now, what we have done in the catalog is an experiment as well, right? So there is code for that. And then we've got like two types of semantics. There is one, you know, the open config people, they have like semantic, semantic versioning extension there. We can get it directly and we have to upload the metadata. But you've got, oh, we've got also the derived semantic. So we use pyang minus check update from, and we're able to check if there is like 
uh, some semantic, no, sorry, if there are some syntactic changes, which is something different. So it goes by comparing the, the young trees and telling us if you think that there is something different. Now, is this a perfect solution? Well, not really. We were just checking with Joe right now. It would not check, for example, obsolete, right? Uh, it doesn't support Yang 1.1 for now, but we have plans to update the tool set. Now, it's not semantic versioning, right? Because it means that we could have the same Yang modules, but the semantic behind it is different. So it's not the ideal solution. The ideal solution is that someone, whenever it creates a Yang module, will tell us, yes, it's semantic, uh, backward compatible or not, with major, minor, and patch. So with this approach, what do we solve? And I think this is the last slide. Oh, no. We solve the issue of the backward compatibility. compatibility. The tool chain works. We experiment this with the catalog. And most importantly, it fits well into the service composition. Because whenever you want to update your service or update your, your uh, servers, you check what would, that, what would happen if I would move from OS version X to X plus one. You compare a semantic versioning, and we do this in the catalog. You compare if the young parts that you have in your mapping are affected. If they're affected, you've got an issue with your service. So, as Lou mentioned, it should be the beginning of discussion on which problem we want to solve, right? Uh, I like the way that you phrased it with multiple bullets, and we want to see which solution fits uh, with uh, the, those bullets. And yes, there are like open issues. Like, uh, for example, if we go with semantic versioning, what do we do with import, right? Right now, we don't use like import by revision or rarely. Maybe you want to say, I'm able to import everything which is like above major two, for example. So there are corner cases. And maybe you want to have like new naming conventions, like having the same word directly into the, the young name. And maybe you want to tackle a different problem, which is module bundle or package. So how the Yang modules will work together. So I think that we reach in the idea of the point where our modules are kind of used and we're hitting like the deployment issues. So with this, I want to leave it to the chair to drive the discussion. Great, thank you, Benoit. Do you want me to stay here to answer uh, questions? Okay. Uh, okay, I think uh, I'll kick off with the first question uh, or c comment. Um, in Yang, I think currently we're only able to implement a single version of a module at a time. And this works because of the backwards compatibility support that we have. Uh, but now if we move to actually allowing for breakage and backwards compatibility, would we then need to, uh, for instance, support multiple versions of the module um, to uh, enable both the backwards compatible view of the legacy version and also the new version in a server uh, on a typical router I'm don't think so but maybe in an orchestrator or controller where uh, there is like service composition coming from multiple network elements that might be the case yes so uh, as a follow-on this is Lou um, one of the things that we've been trying really hard to fix with Yang is the problem we have with CLIs, where when the version changes on the CLI on a router, um, all of a sudden the user has to change their tooling. Um, I think we're in, at, run a risk of repeating the same thing here. If we don't allow a server to export both the old and the new and allow the user to choose what they use, if we, you follow what I'm saying? Yes and no. We could export multiple ones in library, but only one could be implemented. Now, uh, you want to give the choice to say, okay, I'm export the new one and the old one. You could, you could advertise them, and you expect that one controller or one orchestrator will say which one to use. What if you've got multiple ones? Exactly. You'd want to support multiple. So we, we, this, is, this is a consideration to think about is, is when, when 
we have to be careful here because if we're not careful, we'll end up repeating the same um, problems or reintroducing the same problems we've tried to get away from uh, with Yang. Think about it. You have a customer that has a, a deployment. They're, they have some new, they have some old software, and they have some new software. They want to be able to keep the old software running when they upgrade your router, um, but they also want to be able to use the new software. Yes, maybe on a particular um, session you would only use one version, and you know that might be the compromise. But you would want the the, the server to be able to support uh, both the old and the new. Understood. Is this an issue which is introduced by this proposal? It is, because in the current requirements, you can't have it because you're always backward compatible. It's just yeah, not. It's with, just with not the, possible. The okay. The so it it, it 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 we're not trying to poke holes. We're trying to say let's be careful and think about. Understood. The yeah. Good point. First of all, I would like to say that I support this effort. It's It's been missing for a long time, some, something like this you are proposing. And second, I believe it would be useful to move the update rules away from the specification of Yang, the language, and maybe define them in, in the in the somewhere draft, just to say what, what changes, what updates are possible within one minor version and so on. Because I believe uh, in the definition of the data modeling language, such a policy really has no place because I can imagine that some groups may use Yang even with slightly different uh, meaning of, of, of the versioning rules. So, so I've been arguing against these update rules in 7950 for a long time. So that would be my proposal to really do it now and move it away. So Lada, clarifying question. So actually, assuming we, we have this an extension, you would like to have the update rules telling that are in uh, such a document telling with that extension, the no, update rules are the following. I, I agree that we have to do something with the import uh, statement. So this has to be done in, in the Yang specification, certainly. But I'm talking about the text. I think it's section 11 or something in 7950 that talks about uh, an update of a module cannot do this and can do this. So I think this is some kind of policy that uh, different groups can use different policies, perhaps. And uh, this really doesn't belong to the specification of, of the language itself. Balazs Daniel Eriksson. Uh, I have wrote a quite long mail about this yesterday. Uh, just some of the main points from this. First of all, I strongly disagree that we can't make uh, incompatible changes today. When you obsolete or deprecate any data node, then you are not uh, mandated to implement it anymore. So you are, you, even today, we allow to remove complete subtrees and keep the, mo the module name. We so are you're no the rules are already broken. Sorry? The rules are already broken. Yes, yes. Well, Strongly. I, you're, you're mischaracterizing the, the rules, right? What the first stage is, and I get these backwards. Uh, I uh, you deprecate first, and um, it, it, there's an expectation that deprecate is used to support a transition period, and then you end up with obsolete where it's removed. But while, during the deprecate, you're not supposed to use it, but you're supposed to implement it. Or I don't remember the exact phrasing, but it, it's a transition period. So you know we 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 have the notion of a, a phase out. It's not a, a, a an immediate removal. And that's part of the reason for bringing up the 8022 comment is is that we went to 8022 this is we went immediately to immediately to removal and that is uh, was a sort of an exception and that's why we wanted to highlight it. Sorry, I disagree. If you read the exact text of the Yang 1.1 standard, it allows you to remove deprecated nodes. You don't have to implement deprecated. It. Sorry. Yes. yes. Okay. You're already allowed to uh, remove those nodes, but even obsolete is allowed by the update rules, which means that you can remove those nodes completely. So an OSS, an orchestrator, cannot depend on these nodes still being present. The second, I, think, I think you're getting into what is strictly um, uh, required and what is 
uh, implied. It, it says it permits new and continued implementation in order to foster interoperability. You know, so th there's already a notion of a transition period in the rules. It's not quite as um, cut and, and dry. Then it's strongly worded because I, I just I just read it. You know, that's okay. what it said. I, I I know, but it's strongly worded because it doesn't state that you must still implement deprecated nodes, must keep the implementation. You are allowed to remove it. Yes, but that's it. The other main point is that, first of all, I very strongly support this work. We support it in Ericsson so strongly, we implemented it ourselves for Ericsson. This is also a big problem for OS, for any network management uh, software. So if I get a device with a newer model, can I still work with it like I did with the old? Or is it dangerous because there are unknown changes? Shall I just stop my software here as well? So this is absolutely needed. Uh, there are some more details that I, I could be happy to support. Uh, I also feel that this bundle and package could be handled separately, but I don't object of being it here. Uh, I would agree with your, your last point. Uh, somehow we, we open this with a draft telling we see this issue. By the way, we knew it for two years, right? Uh, and now we started to just, and we discussed this also the, with the young doctors, uh, that we wanted to open a discussion trying to see which problem we solve. So I, I, I agree with you that the notion of bundle maybe is not part of this. Also, we, with our own solution, which is very similar to this one, we had uh, many cases where the model exact didn't exactly change, but the behavior expected by the model changes. So a yes. manual assignment of these uh, semantic version numbers is, is needed sometimes. And also, I propose that for every Yang revision statement, a mandatory substatement, at least for new models, to have these semantic versions. And to, to come back to one of the points you made, I know one of our NMS OSS, I mean, they just put, instead of having the Yang name in the OSS, they put Yang name and this, the revision next to it as a single new string, uh, tricking the, the two, it's a, new, it's a new Yang module, because we're not sure about sem semantic versioning. One more point is that uh, prefixes are also very important. We like to think that we have the namespace, the module name, who cares about the prefixes? It can be exchanged anytime. No. Prefixes are stored both for instance identifiers both, and identity references, and also in human conversation. We very often refer to modules with their prefixes. Yanglib is a common reference in emails and other places. So if we update something to Yang library dash two, will we keep the prefix or not? If we change the prefix, we have a data, data migration problem because we have to go and find all the stored updates in the file system of the operator and change the prefix there as well. I have two comments from Jabber. Uh, I'm gonna actually go out of order because Martin is responding to Blasus and it, it, the comment he has is that a server is always allowed to remove support for a module uh, on a new software version. So we have even a bigger compatibility uh, issue with um, uh, that our um, potential cap cap backwards compatibility problem. Thank you, more coffee please. Um, yeah, but of course, an, a vendor would be sort of foolish to remove something that's used by their customers. Uh, that was comment number one. Now from Jeff Haas. Uh, oh, by the way, the the uh, the comment at the end, at the end was mine, not Martin's. Um, uh, from uh, Jeff Haas, the issue is somewhat analogous to the issue of multiple modules managing uh, similar information. For example, the BGP module, which we have. Uh, open config uh, and one still working through IETF. I'm actually trying to figure out how that relates, but uh, I have to, it was a comment on your presentation earlier. Maybe the update, the update uh, part. Perhaps maybe about having multiple versions supported. Uh, basically structural mapping. Okay. 
Uh, Rob Wilson, Cisco. So I, I strongly support this. I like this idea of doing semantic versioning. Um, I think that change, having to change a module's name and the prefix whenever you want to do a major version change is a real hassle for, for everyone involved. I don't, don't think that's the right solution. I also quite liked Lou's point that he made on earlier on about the fact that if you use GitHub to develop these modules and want to put patch changes and things like that, again, the semantic version versioning here marries to that quite well in terms of how you would naturally manage this. Um, developers are also very used to using this sort of version scheme. So it's not like it's a brand new scheme that people don't understand. It's a scheme that's well used in the industry, seems to work, and seems to be well understood. Um, I also agree that the, the suggestion that import by revision effectively needs to be fixed. Um, I'm not even sure that the one today is actually that useful. It seems to constrain in the wrong way or, or where you can't necessarily actually use, use it in the way you want. So I think something along the lines of uh, you need to say, I want to only port this same major um, version number probably seems likely. So I think that's useful. Um, one last comment I'd like to make is that perhaps the issue that came up about having to support two versions of the same module um, in terms of upgradability, could that perhaps be solved by you configuring on the device which which version you want the device to um, provide? Um, and that doesn't allow two different clients both to access Diff the different versions, but it does allow uh, the some control over as to which version it's going to export. The issue is always the same one for NMS. What about, about two NMSs, right? Then you can't, yeah. yeah. Uh, Dan Bogdanovich, the only thing what I would say, I concur what uh, Rob said and also what Lou said, and uh, uh, I support this work. He said everything. So. <laughs> We'll quote you on that, Dan. <laughs> well, Ashley and yeah, Ericsson, one more uh, requirement we have on all this. I want to have a Yang name and a simple statement like the semantic version. Just read those, those two lines and understand whether the module is really compatible or not. So without a full check for the status statements. So you want to have the same verb part of the Yang name? Not Did necessarily, I... just that reading the somewhere, uh, the ver, uh, somewhere and the name that's two, reading two lines. I don't want to make a full comparison of the model to find out what is it. Right? Reading these, just these two statements, that's fine. Right, so let me make sure I understand this because I couldn't say it multiple ways. So you would like to have an extension, not only the semver, but like the module name semver. That could be one way which could solve a specific issue you don't want to bring, but maybe we want. Like, let's pretend there is an uh, IETF VLAN Yang module, right? And we do this as a temp solution while the IEEE uh, does uh, the, the real one. So whenever the IEEE will do the real one with a different uh, URN, with a different module name, maybe we want to stress at that point that, I, that IEEE Yang module updates the IETF Yang module, so you need now extension URN, module, semver, but maybe I'm going too far because... I think your uh, solution, what you have in the draft, that just having a semver statement somewhere, I think that's enough for me. Okay. Uh, from Jabber, from Jeff Haas. The issue isn't necessarily two versions of the same module, it's the blast radius effect. You update a major module, you have to upgrade the entire ecosystem. Regarding to the prefix issue that Mawash mentioned, I just checked uh, the specification for the IANA Yang module registry, uh, and it only says that uh, module and submodule names and namespace URI have to be unique. So I think not, nothing prevents us from reusing the same prefix for, for uh, modules with different name. I don't know if it's uh, but it, in some cases, it might really be useful, and really, I and I should accept such a registration without any problems. And I think it is part of the. I, I, don't, I, I just want to clarify what you say. You're saying it's okay to reuse a name. Okay. And I think this is part of the 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 thing that we have to decide. Right. Uh, we've been listing multiple problems already, like the update, like uh, the semantic versioning like the URN, 
like the package, it would be good to agree on what we want to solve, right? Uh, and maybe we do this in sequence. But in the end, what we're trying to solve is like the, the deployment on those young modules. So this is a good thing. Uh, Rob Alton, so um, one comment I missed earlier actually is it was about packages. Um, and I think we need to be very careful with packages, um, similar to Jeff Hass's comment, that we don't want to tightly couple lots of particular versions together such that you can't, if you have to upgrade one module, you end up having to upgrade the whole lot. I mean, when you look at the Linux packaging system, that seems to work very well where you mostly can pull in particular packages and upgrade some of them as you want. So I think we need to be very careful with the packaging side of this that gives us great more, more flexibility on how we upgrade things. And, and I would agree with that because uh, most of the packages I have in mind are service oriented. Yeah. And your service is not my service, it's not a different service. So in the end, whatever we're going to say in the ITF that they work together, this could be resolved with like metadata. Those are all the set of NMDA compatible Yang modules. Those are all the ones that are produced as RFCs. And, and then depending on what you care about, you will pick the right values in the set of metadata that we've got. As opposed to us telling for whatever service you could think of, this set will work because after some time, the services will evolve and it will, they will not work any longer. I, I think you'll find it'll be out of date as soon as you've published it. There'll be, there'll be another module that needs to be updated as soon as it's done. I mean, yeah, I don't think it works. Well, Ashley and Ericsson, I think for me at least the two main uh, root problems are one is that I need a small bit of information, like the module name combined with the semantic version, that tells me if this version of the module is compatible or not with the previous one. We don't have this today. This would provide us. The other one is I want to be able to find out that uh, this compatibility just without comparing the, the full module. And uh, yeah, and also the other big problem is that we want to allow some level of uh, incompatible changes, routing and some others stated. Yes, they should be indicated clearly by the server or some other way, but sometimes keeping the name and the prefix and namespace and still doing incompatible changes is needed. So find out easily what is compatible and sometimes allow limited incompatible changes. These are the two problems for me. Which could be described like in the minor of Semver, for example. The, the rules would be different if you've got like major or minor or patch. This is what you're talking about by uh, small uh, backward compatible changes. Is this what you, what you mean? I, I think we need to re uh, revisit what we mean by small and backward compatible. Obviously. I agree with Lada that yes, that needs a full document. And I would say that, yep, yeah, we need to revisit that. So, um, Dan, if it's okay, can I cut you off? Fine. Okay, thanks. Uh, we actually are a little over, so it would be good to start, try to wrap up this part of the conversation. We actually could go 20 minutes into our, our break time, but some people may want cookies. Um, so I'd like to, we'd like to try to uh, uh, wrap this up. We think the most important thing is, is that we agree on the problem rather than the specifics of one solution because we as a group really haven't spent enough time thinking about solutions to think this is the one solution we're going to follow or if after when we go back to or if we go back home and have some time to think about it we come up with something different um, so it'd be good to make sure we we agree on the basic problem definition and I'd like everyone to take a look at the screen for a moment I'm not going to say we spent a huge amount of time coming up with this so if we think that there's a better formulation, um, we'd be happy to change it. But is this close enough to capture the problem space we've talked about? Yes, we know that on certain solutions that it, we may have implications that are not captured here, but that's that's a solution problem, not a, not a problem definition. Um, uh, microphone, please. Was this a call for a vote or for no, comments? No, comment. It's a call for comment. 
So uh, based on not hearing a lot of discussion on this, while we had a lot of good discussion on a specific proposal, I'll take it that we're close enough here to have some agreement that this is a problem that we as a working group need to solve. There's no polling on this of do we think it's a problem. We're saying this is a problem and we must solve it. Uh, at this stage, we'd like to ask the working group uh, to think about solutions, propose alternative solutions if you have them, discuss the solution that has already been documented, and let's do this on list. I would expect, although we haven't figured out timing, I would expect that given the importance of this discussion, we're likely to have an interim on it before, between now and 101, although we'll have to, of course, be sensitive to the holiday period that's coming up. Um, final comments, we had three people come up. This is just a problem. Nate, Com Nate, please. Sue, excuse me, thank you, Luke. I appreciate you reminding me. Sue Hares, uh, in this hat, probably R2S, uh, no, not R2S, IDR. I'll get those letters out. Um, I sat there and thought, and so this is a clarification question, Benoit. We often have uh, augmentations to models. Are you tracking the augmentations and how they go back to another module? Is that the catalog? You know what, I, Sue, I'm sorry. I don't want to get into more on the, the specific solution. Uh, well, here, we, I'd like to take that to the list. No, that was a problem question, not a solution. I have no desire to specify a solution for this. Okay, th I'm sorry, I misunderstood what you okay. were asking. Okay, problem. We have uh, extensions to BGP functions which uh, may themselves rev. So you have the base model and you have an augmentation model that reflects, uh, that may rev itself. Do the, is the catalog able to handle that portion so or does it eventually? Catalog is a solution, but in terms of this problem that we have, yes. we absolutely have to cover augmentations. Okay, no an question. augmentation that tracks, okay. Yeah, we absolutely have to make sure that whatever we come up with uh, covers augmentation. I'm sorry, I missed Martin in queue, so I'm gonna repeat, I'm gonna, uh, no, he's here on <laughs> Jabber. Um, uh, so uh, he, he's responding, I don't know what's going on with the mics, he's responding to what's on the screen. He says, um, one is by design, and I agree that two is correctly stated. So we have Martin, Dan, and then Jeff Haas, and then we should close out and maybe still have time to go grab a coffee or a cookie. I, I'm I sorry, Rob, okay. So I'm I just gonna make a very quick comment is I think that probably be helpful this covered the import issue as well, fixing imports. I think that's part, in my opinion, that's part of the problem statement. Okay, so import should be included, absolutely. Yeah, just, just like augment, yeah. Uh, <laughs> when we are working on this, we should uh, make sure that the rest conf and uh, the um, your revisioning will be the same because REST uh, supports versioning of APIs and then we could you know essentially make sure that the API versions are compatible you know with the young versions yeah I, I think others I've said this before in other contexts whatever we do in Yang has to support any protocol underneath it at this stage so whether it should it should support netconf rest comp whatever comes next doesn't matter it's got to support them all so uh, yes, we have to make sure that's accommodated. I'm going to go to Jeff and then Benoit. Uh, Jeff Haas, in response to Sue, in response to Sue, most of the big items are likely to be augmentations with a feature statement. So that's from Jeff Haas. Sorry, BGP. I can't. I need better glasses. That makes sense. I would like to come back to a point, and maybe it's important for multiple reasons. Because, for example, I discuss on one of the documents. Does Lou, does all the solutions here imply that it's wigging in the direction of keeping the same Yang names? I heard. Uh, I, I think I think we um, that should be a part of. No, no, no. I would like you to ask a question now. Oh, sure. So ask. I'm sorry. Ask it again. Sorry. Uh, so I want to understand if all the possible solution we've been discussing, and maybe there will more, always imply that we want to keep as a goal the same Yang module names for a tool path, for a tool chain issue. 
So, uh, actually, I would like to. Address. So, one of the solutions you talked about was actually bringing the version into the exp into the path. And is that the same name, or is that now a different name? I think we have to discuss this in context of the specific solutions. We want to minimize impact to the community and to the implementations, but we, we really have to talk about it in the context of specific solutions. What should we do now? Or not? We are ten minutes okay. over on the discussion. If uh, you know, we all want to give up the break. I guess we could go another ten minutes. Okay. Um, you're <laughs> Yeah, we might lose our microphones first. Okay, so um, I guess that's it then. We should, um, can you turn it off? Press and hold. All right, thank you everybody. We're gonna take a 10 minute break. See you and see you back in this room in 10 minutes. Thank you.